All right. Well, hello, everybody. I'm just bringing you this late uh, scrim against HG and Nexel. Uh, it does look like HG is using Rantology as a Merc, um, but these guys are playing right now for fun, and I'm going to go ahead and spectate, and we're going to watch them. All right, so it looks like the spawns are cross spawns. We've got Nexel up in Atrium, HG down in sub-access, and there's lots of pressure going on so far throughout this map. Llama and Toby making their way into Data Core Rentology, coming to back them up. But Gorgeous, Patchy, and Gliss are in here to defend, taking down Llama. Down goes Rentology, but Toby getting a kill on Gorgeous. Gliss able to clean up. Weapons 1 has completed Armor 2 going immediately. We do know that Nexel likes to do an Armor push, so we'll probably see Armor 3 before we see any other upgrades from this team. Let's go ahead and watch Bitey. So as you can see, Bitey is definitely working the room. He's using space to his advantage. But it looks like there's probably two skulks and a lurk in here, plus these crags. It's going to make it really difficult for them to kill any massive engagement on them. So it looks like actually three skulks and that lurk, and these marines are probably finished up at this point. But Bidey is definitely not giving up. They actually take down what seems to be one of the skulks, two of the skulks, and the lurk still alive. Let's go back to the top head view over here. Bidey and Gorgeous are now still working on that uh, harvester. And this has actually been a fantastic engagement by Nexel. Here comes a Skulk Pack. Four Skulks making their way up into flight control right now. And I would definitely say that Gorgeous and Bitey are probably in trouble at this point. Probably should have dropped that phase gate a little bit earlier, but I think he was waiting for the res. Man, and Arline just trying to get any shots here on Toby. But again, those crags being there, that's helping this team heal as they're in this engagement. Immediate hive drop as soon as they kill uh, as soon as they kill Arline there. And now there's a big assault down in shipping with Gliss and Patchy. I'm gonna go ahead and add the team names. This is the first game that these guys are playing again. These are totally practice. Um, you know, Nexel's definitely trying to play higher end teams before Germany. So that's uh, about what's happening right now. Big push over in flight control. We got three Marines, Bitey, Gorgeous, and Arline in here against Toby and the Lurk Fix. And it looks like right now they're actually in a great position. They're trying to get these crags down. Gorgeous is working on the crags while Arline and Bitey keep the Skulk and Lurk away from everything. So with pressure happening at two points right now, down in sub-axis and in flight, Nexel's in a great position here. It's hard for uh, Mercury to spread out its team to take out either of these forces well, and it looks like Nexel's going to reinforce sub-axis right now. But we're gonna go ahead and stick here in flight control for the moment, because it looks like a three Skulk push with the Lurk, and here they come. Down goes Toby immediately to a shotgun. Rantology's in a lot of trouble. Rant goes down. Wild Chicken coming to trying to get some hits. Gorgeous in the shotgun takes down Wild Chicken. Fix hurting pretty bad. Llama coming in trying to get hits as well, but seems rather slow as a skulk just bouncing around and goes down as well. And now it looks like this hive is down, 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 down. So while they're cleaning up in flight control, we're going to go down here to sub-access. It does look like currently there are no eggs. One egg just uh, showing up here down in sub-access, but I don't think they're going to be able to stop this Nexel push. Mercury fixes what's holding them up right now. He has been the only delay factor. And sure enough, the hive does go down in flight control, and immediately the GG comes down because there is nothing they can do. So there you have it, folks. Nexel takes game one against Mercury. And uh, we will move on to game two 
where we will swap sides and next will become the aliens, Mercury the Marines. This is just a warm-up round. The two teams are getting ready, but they're not playing yet. So now it's just a matter of time before we get going. I'm sure they'll ready up pretty quick. Both teams are, again, just practicing. Um, I will be interested to see what Mercury does as Marines. They are at a slight ping disadvantage being from Europe, but... You know, the Marines are actually a pretty strong class at the moment compared to the aliens. So it'll be interesting to actually see if the Marines hold up a better um, a better game in the long run here. And Versal having fun evolving. So again, we're just waiting for these teams to ready up. I do apologize for those watching the video on demand as uh, I don't really like to do video editing, so we're just going to watch through all these breaks. But luckily, there's only been about a minute and a half, and here we go. Oh, see, I messed that up. All right, so we've started in the atrium and sub-access. The Nexel Skulks are moving out in a 3-2 pack through ventilation on towards Data Core and Computer Lab, while the Marines are doing a 2-3 split to Crevice and Reactor. First blood's going to be in Glass Hallway. Toby spots Bitey. That's a good thing for them. Now they know where the, where the pack is coming from. But the question will be, can Toby beat these Skulks, or are they going to catch him by surprise now with... Uh, Oh, there we go. Great kill by Rantology, finding our line, catching Gliss. Now that means that the Marines have essentially won this first engagement. This is a big deal. Moving into Data Core, Rantology and Llama are going to scare Gliss away. And I don't think that they saw the Drifter make it in. Toby's going to be all alone here in Crossroads. There's Bitey and Gliss. Toby has to get a good win on this engagement. Bitey's going to go down, possibly. No, Bitey stays up. And Bitey stays up with less than 3% health. Toby goes down, and you can bet these Skulks are going to immediately move to Data Core. So three Skulk push into Data Core right now against Rantology and Llama. They're just biding their time all the while here at Crevice. Gorgeous is working on the RT. Constant pressure on the RT is a good move by him. And it looks like Gorgeous takes down the extractor but goes down to Toby's pistol. Over here in Pipe Junction, we've got Gliss just waiting. Our line in the back here, and it looks like Bitey has taken off. Aliens at this point have only expanded to ventilation, though, which they're starting to take a lot of damage from Llama and Rantology. Gliss coming from behind. Rantology goes down. The Gorge Spit comes out. Versal getting some great spit there, and Llama goes down to our line's bite. Over here in Flight Control, the Marines are continuing their expansion of the Western Front. We've got Crevice flight control and now computer lab going up and it looks like we've also got a single marine in crossroads. Apache working on the extractor in reactor but Rantology coming back and putting pressure on him. Llama also coming in as well. Data core is at this point secure and Versal's in here because this is the expansion hive. But they got to be careful because there's no one down here to sub-access right now. And the Marines are closing in quickly as Gliss is the only one that's down here. And he's at 3% fix at 7. So the question is, who is going to get the kill? Medpack's coming down. Fix is going to go down. Or sorry, Fix is going to take Gliss down. And get a forward armory up. This is not a good place for Nexel to be in.
Now the benefit here is that they do have the drifter. So they're going to see the drifter, you know, the, the aliens are going to be able to see what's going on in this room. They're going to be able to know that, you know, there was just a uh, fix in there. They're going to be able to know that they do have a forward armory. And this is going to cause them to retreat a little bit. But all the while over here in ventilation, we've got Toby battling Versal the Gorge. It would not be good for Versal to go down and Versal actually stays up because our line comes in to save him as a skulk. They'll also save this harvester. And again, only being on the one harvester here in ventilation is the expansion. That res flow is a little bit slow. They need to get some res going on in data core, but I think that they've decided to just wait and build the hive and then expand to the res node. Over here in computer lab, Era is back over here. Gliss and Gorgeous hiding up in the vent area. Well placed mine catches Gliss by surprise. Era takes him down. Gorgeous still waiting in the vent. And we're going to go ahead and switch over here to Data Core because we've got interaction, well-timed power outage thanks to those Hydras. And these two Marines are going to go down like butter on a biscuit. And there goes the Harvester. So he actually did decide to put the Harvester down instead of dropping the Hive. I think he could have dropped the Hive with how well they're winning engagements right now. But uh, it's probably the smarter move to get the, the extra res flow going. Computer Lab is building up more and more. Era and Fix in here. Gliss trying to do what he can. Ghosts away that armory, but gets caught off guard by Fix, and he will go down pretty handily. Now notice they have lost the drifter that was in here, and because they've lost that drifter, the aliens do not know what's going on over here other than what Gliss scouted. And now they're finding yet another drifter. This is not good for the alien team. As a three-man push begins to come up towards ventilation, they want to get this res down. And rightfully so, because Gliss and Bitey are... Well, Bitey looks like he already has enough res to go to Lurk, and that's what he's doing right now. And Gliss is going to be there in just a second. For those of you that listen to the podcast or watch these games in general, you'll know that Nexel has been playing a two-Lurk combination of late and it is a deadly combination at that the two lurks are lurks are able to assault so much more effectively and uh, this is quite impressive to watch mercury on the other hand is still getting a lot of great upgrades they're holding five extractors which is nothing to worry about at this point shotguns on the field armor level one armor level two researching phase gates coming out mines they are in a good position with the two IPs as well. I'd love to see the phase tech get used very quickly as soon as it's available because they need more momentum on this map. They're still in a good place as long as they can start putting pressure on one of these hives. Three-man push towards Pipe Junction. Checking for drifters. Smart play by Rantology. Those drifters give the aliens vision, and without the vision, they can assault with much more ease. Now, but in coming from behind, Bitey and Gliss with Arline the Skulk, and these Marines aren't going to stand a chance against that onslaught, getting the RT here in ventilation down to 3%. Phase gates are up. Era and Fix working on those phase gates, and no one nearby. we got one Skulk starting to make his way. Patchy is not going to get here in time. This phase gate's going to go up. Forward armory being placed now. And again, Patchy's not really going to stand much of a chance against these Marines. Now, what Mercury cannot do here is allow Nexel to cause focus to be in one place. They've got to get another phase gate up, probably over here in reactor core or even up in glass hallway. They need to be able to pressure Nexel from both sides like Mercury had happened to them when Nexel was playing Marine. Gliss coming in, but they've got to be careful. There are shotguns on the field. Gliss and Patchy trying to work against Fix, Toby, and Era. And down goes Fix. Gliss taking shots, able to heal at the hive. Data Core has finished and immediately shift is being researched. Our line is now grabbing his carapace. And they're coming, and they take out the Marines. But Toby has retreated all the way back to the phase gate to defend. And now Fix has got his shotgun out. But can he take down Patchy? Our line is working his way through the vent. And they're going to keep the pressure up. And Nexel actually doing a great job of keeping the distraction and focal point over here at Computer Lab. Again, I will reiterate that for this to be an effective push by the Marines, they need another phase gate somewhere over here in uh, Glass Hallway. They need to be able to keep a cross 
pressure going. Looks like they actually decided to move for Crossroads, which I don't think was as effective in this situation. And uh, Nexel's just waiting for him. Now Nexel's going to begin waiting, working on their res. Big push down here to sub access. Well, not such a big push. And they're going to quickly actually go down to those skulks and that lurk. Adrenaline now being researched. Yeah, it's very unfortunate here because it looks like Nexel's really just got the upper hand in these matches. Again, that could be ping disadvantage. Again, these are practice, so, you know, we're just going to go with that. Trying to get the phase gate up here in Crossroads again. Seems like Gorgeous is the only one here. We're going to go ahead and watch Rantology now because she's the one defending, and this is a great point to see what is going on to make sure that you can track any movement in Crossroads. And it looks like they're actually going to go really aggressive and go for a second command station. And they are holding six extractors, so it's not necessarily a bad idea. Second command station will give them uh, nano shield and the ability to go for a proto lab and get up, say, um, jetpacks. So this is a pretty smart move by Mercury at this point. Uh, the benefit of this, of course, is that with the nano shield, with the ping disadvantage, They'll be able to last that much longer and defend while putting on a major assault. Again, holding five to six RTs, not a bad place to be in. The Marines keep going for that ventilation RT. Now they're going to try to hit down here and sub access. Three Marines, no aliens around. Here comes Gliss. He's already hurting from his engagement and ventilation. He's getting healed by the hive. Shotgun blast coming down. Now they cleaned up the phase gate though in Crossroads. They're going to lose all that stuff in Crossroads, possibly even the chair, but they're going to come back and defend first. They do lose the, uh, the Harvester in sub-access though, so well played by Mercury to get that down. But losing Crossroads is another tough situation. Command station taking damage. Rantology getting great pistol shots and now even a shotgun taking down Gorgeous and since they're in the same room playing together I can tell you that Rantology is probably laughing right now. Gliss has been very effective as Lurk as well as Bitey neither of which have gone down at all. We are still a few uh, ticks away probably another minute and a half to two minutes from the fades coming out on the field and this is a great position for Mercury to be in because without those fades on the field they can put up a lot of pressure they are at level one weapons level two armor advanced armory coming online and they have got the phase gate back up in crossroads <clears throat> not a whole lot of play going on at the moment Aliens have gotten very aggressive though. Look at this placing uh, a harvester up here in Reactor core trying to just grab as much marine territory as they can the Marines have really felt like holding the west side is more important to them and they're gonna put pressure back here in Ventilation again, but these lurks have got to be careful. I mean they are effective But at the same time these shotguns are very deadly weapons level two being researched right now The advanced armory is complete Oh, and Gliss has got to be careful. That was two good shots from that shotgun onto him. Versal in here healing. Bitey hurting. Gliss still hurting. Oh, and down goes Gliss. So the first lurk is off the field. We finally have enough res to start seeing some fades. The aliens have cleaned up, but all the while the Marines have also taken out reactor core. So they are still pressuring Rez, although, you know, the aliens have gotten enough to get these fades out. Blink already researched. Uh, I'm interested to see how much this will turn the tide. Level 2 weapons coming online. Level 2 armor will help against the fades. But again, you know, the ping disadvantage could be to their disadvantage. Definitely getting comfortable with their shotguns. Toby and Rantology cleaning up over here. Bitey the only lurk. Oh, and now the power node is placed in Pipe Junction. Could we be seeing a forward phase gate and armory in Pipe Junction? I would say yes. 
And it looks like Fix is making his way down here to sub access, working on the eggs a little bit here and there, just being a distraction. We do have Patchy out as Fade, and they're starting to put some pressure on Reactor Core. Looks like they're coming from behind. They want to get this phase gate down in crossroads, but this is allowing the Marines to get, you know, the pipe junction built, and actually they're going to retreat, which I think is a mistake. I think that Era actually should have stayed and finished that power node. Probably could have gotten um, an armory up, but here comes Gorgeous from behind. Era not landing really more than one shot with that shotgun, and this is going to be a problem for Rantology, who is all alone in Crossroads, and Gorgeous gets the kill and vengeance on Rantology. Nano Shield being used on that phase gate. Phase gate will go down, but can they take a fade down as a return? For that investment. Bile bomb now out, and Mercury's in a lot of trouble. Jetpack's being researched, but still, these fades have just really turned the tide yet again. Level 2 weapons online. I'd actually love to see them assault sub access right now because they'd have time to beacon back to main. I think they're putting way too much attention into crossroads and all these shotguns. With level 2, they probably could have taken down this hive before this whole onslaught can make their way back. They haven't lost a fade yet, yet there are fades in trouble. Down goes Gliss as Skulk. Bitey still up as Lurk. Versal as Gorge here in Crossroads. And it looks like this phase gate's going to go right back up. And down goes Versal. Our line coming in to help as well. We've got two fades over at Marine Start. But Marine Start's pretty well defended at this point. The two IPs are helping the Marines spawn in pretty quick. Again, I'd like to see them assault sub access. I think that they've got an effective enough push right now in counter. They could afford to lose that phase gate and take out sub access. And now infestation making its way up into computer. This is not good if the Marines do not notice this. The use of bone wall in this situ situation with an assault could be very deadly against the Marine team. So you've now got the three fades and Gliss back on the field as Lurk. Where are these fades going to go? Jetpack's now out. And I guess they're waiting on the jetpacks to do the assault, but I really feel like that was a, a waste of about three to four minutes of encounter time. I think that they really could have taken down sub axis very easily while Crossroads was being attacked. Bitey will go down as Skulk, forward pushing this Drifter, and there's a quite well defended sub axis right now with one Lurk and two Fades. But the shotguns and jetpacks are making their way into data core, and this looks to be a multi-sided approach. They're going after the res. Both of these fades have got to be really careful now. Now all three fades in here. The shotguns have got to get focused right now because they've got to trap one of these fades, and it looks like Toby's going to go down and lose his jetpack and shotgun. All the while, two shotgunners in sub-axis take down Gliss the Lurk, and now they're going for the carapace shell. This is a good move by Mercury. They've got to capitalize. Three fades coming in. Can they get one of these fades down? That would be a good loss against Nexel at the moment. If they could get one of those down, they do have a lot of res in the bank, which means they could replace the egg. And it looks like actually over in uh, Data Core right now, Mercury is going to get down that res flow, which again is really good because that means they can't drop more fade eggs. And look at this, level 3 weapons now online, but a lot of the team does not have a lot of p res, so shotguns are not out. Toby's going to go down, but down in sub-axis, the pressure is mounting higher and higher. The Hive at 47%. They just need to sit back and fire on the Hive. They can do a lot of damage, bring all the aliens to them, and take them down one by one. And it looks like they win this engagement, but they will quickly reinforce the Hive at 47%. Two crags down now to heal it, but the Marine DPS can still outweigh the pressure of those crags.
Lots of pressure happening over in Data Core still too. Taking down this res, and that is very effective push. The aliens did not play very aggressive against Marine res throughout this game, and they'll probably come back to bite Nexel. Um, you know, they, they focus a lot of time on taking down crossroads. They focus a lot of time on, you know, taking down the aggression by the Marines. The Marines have probably won the aggression card in this game. I do still feel, and I will keep coming back to it. People know me. I love to come back and reiterate my opinion over and over and over again. But now a three shotgun approach in sub access. One fade over here taking great hits. Going back in before the heal. Little energy though. And Marines will easily retreat. Gliss is sitting there trying to do some damage with Pile Bomb. Isn't going to be very effective. The Arc Robo Factory is complete almost here. And they will take down that sub access hive one way or another, whether it be arcs or shotguns. And I think that this alien team really doesn't stand much of a chance at this point unless they can start to put pressure on Marine Start and pull these Marines back. But with all those phase gates, it gives them such great momentum throughout the map. And down goes Patchy the Fade. And that is true. We're going to start seeing fades go down probably left and right with level 3 weapons online, level 3 armor online, and shotguns and jetpacks. Oh my, oh my. It looks like Gorgeous and Arline just can't seem to decide what they're going to do here. In comes Llama. Llama has no idea there are two fades in this room, and he will go down. And here comes the first arc. And it does not look like he's going to push it out immediately. He could do so. Um, and look at this. Patchy the Onos is on the field. I didn't even realize Patchy was saving his res. I don't know how effective an Onos is going to be, though, against level 3-3. Three, three. And we're probably going to find out here pretty quick because no doubt they know the Onos is there. I think he got pinged with that shot. Here come the two arcs. They're going to put down the armory. Great position here for the armory. That Onos should not be able to get past the armory here. And these arcs are going to be so effective right now. Yeah, Apache can't get past this. He's going to lose a lot of armor really fast with that shot. The three arcs are going to start doing damage. All the while up here in Marine Start, double gorge, bio bomb attack. They almost got the phase gate down. I think that was too little, too late. That could have happened a whole lot sooner. Anthology desperately working on this armory to try to keep it up before Patchy takes it down. He hoping and hoping that more Marines come, and they do. They'll probably drop an armory right away as soon as that goes away. Three arcs doing massive damage to this hive, taking out one of the crags already. Hive down to 25%. Llama coming in with a shotgun doing more than 5% damage with every shot and down goes the second hive the loss of bio bomb blink leap and they also lost their crag hive which means all they have is shift this is not a good position for nexel to be in If they can get this Onos down, they'll be in a fantastic position. Arline putting a lot of damage out, but Arline's going to go down. There is the loss of their last fade, which is a big problem. And now back up in Marine Start, you've got Bitey doing as much damage as he can. But again, level 3-3, they're just no match for these Marines. And with the Welders and the Max and everything out, I just don't think that there's a whole lot they're going to be able to do here. Yeah, and this is going to be a GG for Nexel, because at this point there is nothing they're going to be able to do against this onslaught of Marines coming in that is coming right now. And that's going to take it probably 1-1 Nexel Mercury. So I don't know if they're going to play a third match. I don't know if they're going to switch the map. I don't know what they're going to do, folks, but I will continue to bring this video on demand. And it's going to be fun, because so far these games have actually been really good. And I wouldn't expect any less from these two teams.
All right. And you are watching a Wasabi One production. This is a video on demand that you are probably watching on YouTube or at WasabiOne.com. So we thank you for watching. You are watching Nexel vs. Mercury. Of course you know that because this is not a Twitch stream. So there are not new people coming in every few minutes. But it's always good to reiterate. And it looks like Nexel is going to take the opportunity here to stay in the game, force Mercury to finish off that hive even though they've GG'd. She gives them a little bit of time to regroup and think about what they want to do if they continue playing in the next round. Uh, it looks like Nexel has actually decided to call it a game. I believe they actually do um, have uh, some other matches and stuff going on. So there we go, folks. That was it. 1-1. One, one. And we hope you enjoyed this video. Check out more at wasabi1.com and our YouTube account slash wasabi0n3. Thanks a lot, folks.